Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another lecture. This one is the second lesson of the seventh unit. We are going to now solve these systems of linear equations graphically. So we're going to be given the equations in general. Uh, we might need to, uh, as we move on, uh, create the systems, but we're going to just start with uh, systems that are given. Uh, so the steps to solve these equations is given up top. We're going to graph both lines. We're going to find the, the point where they intersect. And then we're going to verify that that point is the solution. So what we're really doing when we're solving these equations is we're finding out what x value and what y value satisfy both of these equations uh, and make both sides true. Just like we were verifying before, but we're going to use a graph and the lines that the equations represent to actually figure it out. Uh, so, uh, equation one is x plus y equals three, and equation two is three x minus two y equals 14. So, we are going to graph these first. Um, we can do it in a couple of different ways. We could find out the intercepts and graph them. Uh, we could uh, turn them into y equals mx plus b, uh, which is what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to graph those lines. So with this one, it's really easy. Uh, we move the x over y is equal to negative x plus 3. That's y equals mx plus b. m equals negative 1. b is equal to 3. So I could graph that pretty easily. This one... Uh, let's see, I move the 3x over and I divide everything by negative 2. So y is equal to uh, negative 3x divided by negative 2. That's just 3 over 2x. 14 divided by negative 2, that's minus 7. So the slope is equal to 3 halves and the y-intercept is equal to 7. Uh, negative 7, I should say. So now we can take what we know and use it to graph the system. So let's do that. Um, let's do that here. We're going to graph this system up to seven here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's obviously negative. And this is positive, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's again negative on the way down. We are going to start at the intercepts. So for the first one, we have an intercept of three. Let's do this in a different color. Let's do this in red. We have an intercept of three. So we start right here and we go down one and over one each time. Down one and over one, down one and over one, down one and over one. Our line is going to look something like that. It's perfectly straight, trust me. So it's going to go down one and over one very consistently for this line. Our second line, we start at negative 7 down here, and we're going to go up 3 and over 2. So 1, 2, 3, up, and 1, 2, over. 1, 2, 3, up, and 1, 2, over. Okay, so I have found a place where there is a point on both of the lines. What point is that? That point is four on the x-axis and negative one on the y-axis. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to verify if these work in these equations. If they do, that is the point. That is considered our solution. If they do not, then it is not. So we are going to now verify the solution for both equations. Uh, let's see. Let's do this one first. X plus Y is equal to 3. Uh, X is 4 plus Y is negative 1. That is 3 is equal to 3. So this is true. Okay. So that means that this equation, that works so far. Let's do the other one. Let's see. We have... 3x minus 2y equals 14. 
3, x is 4, minus 2 times y is minus 1 equals 14. This is 12. I'll do this this way. This is 12 minus, no, plus 2, because minus 2 times minus 1 is equal to 14. 14 equals 14. This is true, which means that this equation also works. And our solution is 4, 1. That is what we would be looking for for a solution. The point where both lines cross, it's very obvious in this particular situation because we had a point that landed at the exact same spot for both lines. But sometimes the way we're counting, we won't get that exact point. We'll need to estimate a little bit and we'll need to verify to make sure that we're at least very, very close. Uh, in this case, this is 100% true. So very good job. The next one is a try it on your own. So I'd like you guys to pause it here, give it a go, and see how you do. Unpause it when you're done. Um, and then you can, and we'll, we'll do it together. Okay, so for this one, what we're going to do is we are going to rearrange each of these equations into y equals mx plus b form. So we have 2x plus 3y is equal to 3. We move the 2x over, divide everything by 3. Uh, that would be y is equal to negative 2 over 3x minus plus 1, sorry. So that's one equation where the slope is equal to negative 2 thirds and the y-intercept is equal to 1. And we'll do our other equation, which is a lot more straightforward. x minus y is equal to 4. Move the x over. Negative y is equal to negative x plus 4. We need to flip this around because we can't have a negative y. So y is equal to x minus 4. So the slope is equal to 1. The y-intercept is equal to negative 4. Uh, now that we have those two um, equations and those two pieces of information for each, we can graph it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to draw it on the next piece of paper here. Let's see. So now we're going to plot the lines. Uh, it says, according to this, that our slope for the red line was negative 2 thirds and we started at 1. So we start right here and the slope is negative 2 thirds. That's down 2 and over 3. Down 2 and over 3 out there, something like that. A line that way. And for our other line, we started at negative 4 for our y-intercept, and the slope was 1. So we go up 1 and over 1. 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 It seems that they cross at that point, that point being 3 over and 1 down. So that is the point that we now need to verify to see if that is the solution. So we have... The equation, let's see, x minus y is equal to 4. 3 minus a minus 1 is equal to 4. 4 does equal 4. This is true. That means that the first equation is good to go. Let's check our other equation, which was 2x plus 3y equals 3. 2 times 3 plus 3 times negative 1 equals 3. I'm just plugging in my values. 6 minus 3 is equal to 3. 3 equals 3. This is true. So that's great news. That means that this is the solution to our um, problems here. So the solution is 3, negative 1. And that's what we'd be looking for for a solution. If you didn't get that or you got something different, uh, go back and see where you went wrong 
any questions please let me know uh, for this next one I'm going to show you my paper uh, as we go through it and then there is one more example for us to do and I think that was my last piece of paper well we'll see if we can make it work after this so the next example we have a plane that left Regina at noon to travel 1400 miles to Ottawa at an average speed of 400 miles per hour as you can see I can draw planes, so I drew a plane going at 400 miles per hour towards Ottawa from Regina. At the same time, we've got a 350 mile per hour plane. I can draw planes going from Ottawa to Regina. The distance between them is 1,400 miles. We want to know where they cross and how long it is going to be until they cross paths. Um, so what we've done, or what they have done for us, is they have said that D is the distance from Ottawa. So the point where they cross will be, they'll be at the same distance from Ottawa, no matter where they left from. So D is the distance from Ottawa and T is the time and hours that they've uh, spent since their departure. They have given us the linear, set of, uh, linear system of equations, very nice for them, um, where D is the distance in miles and T is the time in hours. They have actually even given us a graph of the two lines, so here, and here, one is going uh, farther away from Ottawa, one is getting closer to Ottawa, and it estimates that uh, they cross at this point right here. And it says the graph appears to intersect at 1.9650. Nine, so that is going to be something that you will need to do sometimes. You will need to estimate whereabouts it is. Now, if you were to say two and 700 or something like that, that is over here. That is not going to be correct. You will need to be uh, more accurate than that. So 1.9 and 650 is a pretty decent guess for where they intersect. What we want to do to see if that is correct, uh, 650 miles or 1.9 hours, is we need to verify that solution. So in verifying that solution, uh, the first equation, D is equal to 1400 minus 400 times T. 1.9 is T, 650 is D. We found out that 650 and six is, a, is 640 on this side. Now it's approximately the same. And the reason that we say it's okay is because we are estimating where those lines cross. It might not be exactly 1.9. What if it's 1.92? It's really impossible for us to get an exact value, especially with continuous variables like this. Uh, so 650, 640, I would consider that okay when you're estimating. Uh, for the other one, D, 350 times T, we would get 650 and 655. Again, we consider that fairly close with the estimation, so that would be okay. If you got 650 and 700, no, that would be too far off. Or 650 and 600, that would be too far off. Uh, it needs to be reasonably close whenever we're estimating. So verifying the solutions, we found that that is all right. It is approximately 1.9 hours um, that they'll cross at and 650 miles from Ottawa. Um, if there are any particular questions about that, please let me know. Um, but I think that when you're estimating, that was a pretty clear way to do it. Uh, we are going to go to the last problem now. Again, this is the last sheet of paper. Might need to write on the cardboard or something like that. We'll find out. So, example three, write a linear system to model this situation. Uh, admission fees for junior hockey game are $5 for students, nine for adults. 32 people attended a recent game, and the total was $180. We want to put down our variables, write down our equations, and find out where these cross. So let's do that. Um, let's call A the adult students, or adult tickets. And let's call S the student tickets. It's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Uh, in this case, it doesn't really matter which is the dependent and independent variable because it doesn't matter, it doesn't depend how many adults uh, go to students. It doesn't, one doesn't dictate the other. So independent and dependent variable in this case is kind of irrelevant. Uh, as far as our equations go, we know that there are 32 people total. So A plus S must equal 32. 
and the total number of dollars that was collected is 180 and we know that we get uh, $9 per adult plus $5 per student. So I have two equations here. I can go ahead and rearrange these um, to find out um, their slopes, their intercepts, and graph them. Um, one thing I want to take note of though is that there is no possibility to have negative students and negative adults. So we're only going to have the upper right quadrant of our graph when we get there. So um, let's rearrange these. Do this in a different color because I feel festive. Okay, so A is going to be our Y. So A is equal to negative X plus 32. That is this equation rearranged, which means that our slope, sorry, is equal to negative one and our intercept is 32. So interesting, I need to go all the way to 32. For this one, if A is our variable, we need to move this over to this side and the 180 over to the other side. So that's negative 9A is equal to 5S minus 180. Divide everything by 9, or negative 9. I would get A is equal to negative 5, 9 times S minus 180 divided by 9. That would be 20 but plus 20 because we're dividing everything by negative nine. So that means that our slope is negative five ninths and our intercept is 20. All right, I got one more piece of paper over here, I think. Yeah, I can do this. So what we'll do is we'll take those uh, values uh, those slopes and those intercepts and we will graph them again. We're only doing the upper right quadrant of the graph so graph the system upper right quadrant here Like that uh, Adults was our y value and students was our s value. Let's see we had intercepts at 32 and 20. Let's just go up by fives 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And then let's do the same thing for students. Yeah, same thing for students. We'll go uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So 5, 15, 25, 5, 15, 25, 35. This is 35 as well. Okay, so now we have our general layout. We can start to plot our points. Now, our blue line was starting at uh, oh, intercept of 32. So that would be right about there. And our slope was negative one. Uh, so that means that as we go down five, we'll go over five. So over here, something like this. Something like this, something like this, down five, and then it's seven, down another five here, two, and be under. So it doesn't cross because we can't go to negatives. We got a perfectly straight line given there. So that is our um, first line when we talk about the total number of people. It might be 32 adults and zero students, it might be 32 students and zero adults, that's all represented by this line. Our second line starts at 20, which is right here, and has a slope of negative five nine. So it's going to go down five and over nine. So when we get to 15, we're gonna be at nine. It's right about there, I'd say. We're gonna go down another five and over, so over nine will be at 18, right about there. We're gonna go down another five and over nine, we at 27, so right about there. Now we've got our line to draw. You can see how it gets a little bit difficult. Um, this crosses officially, because this should be a little bit lower, at the point five, Sorry, four, 
uh, A is equal to 5 and S is equal to 27. That is where the lines cross. We can verify then that solution with our equations. So A plus S equals 32. 27 plus 5 equals 32. This is 32 equals 32, and that's true, so that's great news. And then our more complicated equation, 9 times a, which we said was 5, plus uh, 5 times the number of students we said was 27, equals 180. This would be 45. This would be 135. This should be a plus sign. Equals 180. This equals 180, so this is also true. So that means that we have correctly figured out which point uh, it crosses there. Now, it's not necessarily um, going to be always possible that we can get the exact line because of our uh, exact point because of our lines, but we're going to always do our best. Um, and then, um, if you were to get one off for something like this. That would be considered okay uh, with me. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, thanks very much for watching, everyone. I'll see you soon.